This is what we're making today. It's just a double shank ring soldered in one spot with the ends forged to about half the thickness of the material. Nice and simple. A lot of leeway for uh, different designing on this one. Measure the inside diameter of your ring, and the ring wants to be snug but not tight. And you use this part of your calipers for measuring the inside. Wiggle it a little bit, make sure it's a maximum size. Add the height of your wire, which is 1.6 in this case. I'm using half round, and it's 1.6 high by 3.6 wide. Add two millimeters to your calculation because this is going to be adjustable and we want a slight overlap. Cut them to length, file the ends flat, and kneel them. Once your pieces are annealed, quench them, dry them, and we're going to plenish the ends and because it's so small I just use my bench block and if you have a planishing hammer use the slightly rounded end this is a French jeweler's hammer and it's slightly rounded and we're just going to hammer about that much of the end. And that much is so that total the total length of the mark is 8.6 millimeters. So do all four ends. Try to get them so that they look roughly the same and then lightly file slight round on the end tidy it up with 400 grade paper on your stick hallmark it now what I want to do is take one of the ring shanks, and I'm going to hold it sideways at about third the distance with my parallel jaw pliers, and I'm just going to give it a little tweak. Yeah, and then I'm going to go to the other end and do the same thing, a little tweak. Now I've still got the third middle part of the shank that is flat and what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the two shanks together and I gave that that kick because I didn't want the solder to flow and uh, solder it all together. So tidy up your hallmark bumps. Put this on your charcoal block. One little piece of solder right in the middle. Get the ends reasonably close like this not like that, and solder it, pickle it, dry it, and then I'll show you what to do. Mix up your flex. Um, I had a question at one point about why does my flex go hard. I didn't have an answer at the time, but what happens is if you let it go dry, it gets it gets really hard and it's really difficult to get it so that it's mixed up again. But I found if you always keep a little layer of distilled water on top, it doesn't go hard. So hopefully that helps. So a fairly generous piece of hard solder. This is about six millimeters long. And you're going to nestle it right in there. Pick it up with your flex brush. You can use tweezers if you want, uh, but I, I usually like 
to pick it up with my brush because that way it ensures that it uh, has flux on it. Nice neutral flame, but for those of you that just have an LPG or a acetylene torch, just turn it on. Use whatever size flame you want. Dry out the flux. Keep your solder pick in your hand in case you need to push things around. And both sides of your ring need to be the same temperature, so I'm just straight down, back and forth. The flux will go clear. Like that, and then the solder will flow. There it goes. Now it's run the full length before that was together, and that's fine. Push it a little bit to make sure it's not stuck to your charcoal. Quench it in water and pickle it. When you come out of the pickle, rinse it, dry it, have a look, and if you did a proper solder join, it won't take any cleaning up. Yeah. So now we're going to form this around our ring mandrel using a rawhide hammer. And when we planish the ends of this, we work hardened it, but when we soldered it, we annealed it. So it's, it's all nice and soft now and ready to go. So about two or three sizes smaller than your ring size. Push this around. And the reason I spread this this way is I want to put one of those in the middle of the other two. So just bend it accordingly. Yeah. So fingers, rawhide hammer. You could use ring bending pliers, but I try not to because they put marks in the metal. And the idea for me was to make this ring simply, no marks, polish it, and it's done. So little bit of judicious hammering and bending. And you're ready to polish it. And it's slightly different, which I like. And it's also slightly adjustable. So I'm just going to polish this on the Tripoli wheel and then rouge and then I'll show it to you again. So there it is. A little bit of soap and water now and you're ready to rock and roll.